everyone, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Fedora 39 is, hopefully, just another few days away from release. In this video, I'd like to take the opportunity and run through a no bloat and lean network installation using the everything ISO built today, which should basically be the finished product. Then, I demonstrate setting up the XFCE desktop environment, Butterfest system snapshotting and rollbacks, as well as a complete Arch Linux-based DistroBox development container with Visual Studio Code. Let's get started. This is the Everything ISO. Install Fedora 39 is our option that we'll take. Welcome to Fedora 39. So we've got English as the language, United States. We'll continue. So keyboard has been pre-selected, English US, which is correct. Language support English and Los Angeles time zone is also corrected, correctly identified. So for my account, my full name is Steven. Username Steven, I'll give myself a reasonable password and enter it twice. Make myself administrative privilege and require the password to use this account which makes the root account disabled, which is what we want today. Installation source is closest mirror. For the software selection, you've got a whole bunch of base environments you can choose from, including uh, window managers, as well as complete desktop environments. Today, we'll select XFCE. Additional software for selected environment, I'd like to select extra plugins for the XFCE panel. And for the Windows file shares, etc. Uh, network storage, I'm going to select system tools, which will allow connecting to SMB shares and tools to monitor network traffic, which is fine. So we'll click done. Another thing um, is we need to configure the installation destination. So we've got a, a 128 gig virtual disk We'll use the automatic partitioning to keep things simple today. And we'll, we can encrypt uh, our data if we wanted to, but uh, we won't. Uh, you can if you wish. Under network and host name, I'm just going to put in our uh, host name, which is also our current host name from our DHCP server, F39-2. That's going to be a virtual machine today for this demonstration. Looks like everything has been configured in Anaconda. So we'll just simply click Begin Installation. And uh, this will create the partitioning and everything and then uh, download the freshest packages from the network because this is the Everything ISO. And uh, this part of the video is heavily edited. So you guys hopefully don't get bored. So it's downloading installing all the packages. Then once the installation is done, uh, any second now, it'll configure grub, configure the kernel, uh, install the bootloader, doing some post configurations, users, etc. And it's done through the magic of video editing. But before we reboot the system, let me uh, switch to console alt control f3 and let me uh, change the file system table by doing a nano mount sysroot etsy fs tab that's where our installed system lives and to make things a little easier and reduce the writes somewhat for our solid state drives make them last a little longer i like to add no access time here uh, for both ButterFS subvolumes, because those are the most heavily used partitions, root and home. And uh, also before we boot the freshly installed system, I'd like to configure DNF. DNF is still pretty slow, so I'd like to speed things up a little bit by adding in the dnf.conf file uh, the option max underscore parallel underscore downloads equals 10. Write out the file, Control X to exit, and we'll save it. 
and uh, then we'll switch over to console 6, control alt F6, and now we can choose reboot the system. And there we go. So it's giving us a grub entry for our new system. Hit enter here. And that's initial setup very quickly. That screen is gone in just a second. Here is LightDM for XFCE session. So I'll just put in my password. XFCE session is the only available session at this time. You can also add other desktop environments, although I wouldn't recommend it uh, due to conflicts. But anyway, here we go. Pretty basic and not so slick uh, theming here for a default XFCE install. Let's go to System, About XFCE. As you can see, Fedora 39 uh, out of the box comes with XFCE version 4.18, kernel 656 as of the creation of this video. Let's go to the Applications menu. Let's go to Settings. Let's go to Settings Manager. Let's fix the screen resolution uh, and set it to 1080p should fill out this uh, uh, virtual machine window nicely. As you can see, it does, but it makes the uh, fonts microscopic. So let's fix that with going to Appearance, Fonts, and let's do the hinting, a slight, and subpixel order RGP. That's pretty good for an LCD screen. Custom DPI setting, we'll put 120. That should add a little over 20% uh, size for all the fonts and elements here. Hopefully more legible for you. Under Power Manager, I just want to turn off the display power management since this is a demo VM. And we'll turn off screen blanking, hopefully, by setting the blank after to the never setting. All right. Good. Let's go to XFCE screensaver and disable the screensaver. Since again, this is a virtual machine. Lock screen, we can um, leave that enabled. Let's go back to all settings. And uh, let's go to desktop. So we've got the standard XFCE wallpapers, but since this is a Fedora install, we should have also the uh, special Fedora 39 wallpaper, or backgrounds rather. As you can see, we've got the light and dark version of the uh, default Fedora 39 wallpaper. So I'll select that. It's a very pretty wallpaper, and for my eyes at least. So to make everything uh, take effect here, let's uh, log out and log back in again. As you can see, the uh, light DM. Uh, login screen takes the uh, wallpaper from our session. Good, that looks a lot better already. Okay, moving along, let's go to Applications, uh, Administration, Accessories. So these are, it's a pretty lean installation as you can see. These are the uh, uh, apps that are installed by default as a minimal install for XFCE. So it's a very lean and mean uh, Fedora XFC install. Uh, let's take a look at uh, DNF Dragora, which is our XFCE software management option for Fedora. And as you can see, you've got um, the following repositories under repository management uh, configured. So basically, um, Fedora, Fedora Cisco Open H264, updates, that's pretty much it. Very basic. Spe speaking of basic, uh, let me go to the base system here. So you can see, uh, for example, you can add a whole bunch of fonts here. So you can use, um, you see some fonts that you like, you can select them and install them using uh, DNF Dragora. A whole bunch of Google fonts. 
and more Google fonts. And uh, different languages, of course. Mozilla, MS Core fonts, just about everything here you can think of. Roboto. Yeah, so in addition to that, you've got all these other options, other packages, package groups. Under the XFCE desktop package group, example, here are the applications for the XFCE environment, our desktop, XFCE apps. Here, including a bunch of VPN uh, network manager um, plugins. Also additional uh, extra plugins for the XFC environment. Multimedia support, they're already all installed as the uh, check marks indicate. You can also install Numeric, which is, uh, I guess, attached to the XFCE desktop environment as a spreadsheet, I believe. Okay, so that's a quick run through of DNF Dragora. Let's open up the terminal here. And what I'd like to do first for every fresh install is make sure everything is up to date. So sudo dnf offline upgrade download, because I like to upgrade uh, offline uh, to make sure that we can write to all the files without error. Since this is a network install we just did, uh, as expected, the transaction uh, queue is empty because our system is already up to date. But if it weren't up to date, then after this, I would do a sudo dnf offline upgrade reboot and then once it's rebooted with the uh, fresh updates installed, then I run the same command with the uh, clean option uh, to get rid of the download packages, uh, assuming everything installed correctly. So that's what I generally tend to do with uh, DNF systems such as Fedora Workstation. Okay, um, moving right along. Uh, let's see here. Let's fix the look and feel of this uh, XFCE install here. Let me get rid of the bottom panel. Select panel two. As you can see, faintly, there's a red outline uh, around the bottom panel two. Let's get rid of it by clicking the minus button. And it's gone. So we're left with panel one. So let's unlock the panel so we can move it with the uh, grab area there. and move it to the bottom of the screen, and then relock it. Kind of similar to Windows, right? That's what we want to have. For the row size pixels, the height of the panel, I'll put 40 pixels. That makes it nice and roomy. Under appearance, I'd like the fixed icon size from 16, I'll change that to 24. So that looks a little more balanced with the rest of the desktop. Those, that's the basic look and uh, appearance configuration of the panel. So um, let me just go to settings here and appearance. Let me switch from Adwaita to Adwaita Dark. Adwaita, Adwaita, I don't know how it's pronounced. Forgive me if I pronounce it incorrectly. For the icons, um, you've got some mint icons here. Big selection, so I'll choose Mint X Aqua, that's very nice for my eyes. You can choose, of course, whatever you prefer. Looking better already. So let me uh, right click on applications. I'd like to remove it and replace it with the whisker menu. So let's remove applications. And then we right click on the panel and we select add new items. And these should be in alphabetical order. I'm looking for whisker menu, and there it is. Let's add the whisker menu, which puts it at the bottom right of your screen. Let me right click here and choose move and move it over to the bottom left of, your, of the desktop, which is where I like to put my uh, start menu, right? It's like Microsoft, my goodness. So let's right click on the Whisker menu icon, click Properties, and uh, I 
to applica make application icon size and category icon size smaller for both. A little bit of transparency here. Let me make it 80% uh, opacity so you can see a little background bleed through. For appearance, I'm going to change this icon from the mouse, X of CE mouse, to the Fedora logo. And searching uh, gives us uh, two options here, a couple of options. Let's choose this one as uh, the logo for the whisker menu. And there you go. The bottom left, you can see has taken effect. We've got the Fedora logo now instead of the mouse. Very nice. Okay. So next, let's add a couple launchers here. Let's add new item, launcher, add, and add one more time. We close. On the bottom right, you see two launcher placeholders. Let's move the first one all the way to the left, right next to the launch menu, and move the second one next to its, its sibling. So for the first launcher, let me right click, click on properties. I'd like to make this launcher uh, the terminal launcher. So I'll select uh, terminal emulator. Yeah, I think I'll choose that. So we'll click add. And then we'll click close. Close one more time. If I click on that launcher, it launches our terminal. Lickety split, very nice. So for our second launcher, you can add as many as you like. I'm just doing a demo here. The second launcher, I'd like that to launch our web browser, namely Firefox, which is included by default. Uh, this Fedora install. So let's see if that works. And it does. Let's skip the step. So yeah, generally the latest, very fresh uh, um, Firefox package is installed with, with, with Fedora. Fedora is leading edge, not necessarily bleeding edge, right? There's Fedora Magazine for your reading pleasure. Okay, looks like everything works there. So let's launch the terminal. And uh, let me go to Edit Preferences. Let me just configure the terminal to my liking. I generally like to uh, hide the scroll bar by making it disable. And uh, I'd like to make it slightly transparent. I'll make this 90% uh, opaque. And then their colors, the presets, I like the, uh, the Tango color collection. And we're done. Let me close this here. Let me open up. Another terminal, as you can see, here we go. Not bad at all. So, moving along, let's do sudo dnf install menu libre, that's our menu editor, works very well with XFCE uh, whisker menu. So we'll install that. We won't use that here, but it's demonstrated in other videos, both in this channel and other channels. But I like to have that installed. I think you will find it useful as well. Next, let's sudo a DNF install ButterFS Assistant. Tab completion works with DNF, very handy. And also, to keep track of our DNF installs uh, and sna auto snapshotting, Python 3 DNF plugin snapper. So every time you do a DNF install 
or uninstall, it automatically creates pre and post snapshot, snapper snapshot pairs. So let it install. Let those two install, mind you, with all its their dependencies. As you can see, there are quite a few. Let's clear the terminal. And let's do a quick DNF history. As you can see, um, DNF history works. So you can use that to roll back as well. Um, let's do a quick uh, OS release check here. As you can see, we are running Fedora 39, not the beta version. Support end will be May 14th of next year, which uh, gives us plenty of lifespan for a Fedora release, the standard, standard uh, support period. Okay, so let's close the terminal. Let's go to system and let's launch Butterfest Assistant, which is uh, comes from, I believe, the folks at Garuda Linux. Very handy tool for uh, Butterfest installs such as Fedora. Really a painful way of setting up Snapper and Butterfest snapshots, which is the whole point for these actively semi-rolling uh, rapid release uh, distros like, uh, like Fedora. Okay, so under snapper settings, let's create a new config. Let's call the config name root. You can do the same thing for home, by the way. We won't do that here. Let's just stick with root here. We like to have our snapper numbered automatic cleanup enabled and also snapper boot enabled where it creates a snapshot for every boot. And we'll apply the system, D changes and save the configuration. We won't enable timeline snapshots that clutters our snapper list quite a bit. Instead for snapshot retention, for automatic cleanups, we'd like to retain uh, 10 snapshots. This is what I like to do. You may like to do more, but the more you do, the slower the file system gets. I hear, I haven't actually tested this, but that's what I hear. 10 is reasonable, right? Um, that should get us out of trouble should we need to do rollbacks. Good, okay. So that's generally how I do my snapper configuration via ButterFS Assistant. So let's go back to uh, our snapper and snapshots. Let's create our first manual snapshot. And I'm gonna call this snapshot, uh, bracketed with three asterisks to make sure it stands out. And this will stay, by the way, until you manually delete it. This won't be automatically deleted because it's not a numbered snapshot. So we'll call this snapshot fresh install and cleanup is blank. So this snapshot will persist until you manually remove it. But the other sna auto snapshots are numbered. So they will clean themselves up automatically using uh, the uh, snapper cleanup config up to 10 as configured. So in the terminal here, let's do sudo dnf install neofetch to test this snapper system and rollbacks. So here we go, neofetch is installed, very handy utility as a system summary. Center of the terminal. If I type neofetch, you can see running Fedora Linux 39, kernel 656. Uh, yeah, not too much memory used. XFCE is very light. Not so bad, not as good as a window manager per se, but it's not bad either. So uh, auto snapshotting works. As you can see, we have snapshots two and three, pre and post respectively and they're number cleanup, so they automatically clean up after a while. If you're past 10 snapshots, and it shows you've installed NeoFetch. Cool. So let's do a sudo snapper undo change two and three. So that should uninstall NeoFetch. Let's see if that works. If I hit enter. So looks like it did, it deleted a whole bunch of files. NeoFetch is 
gone. And if you want NeoFetch back again, you just reverse the change. Snapper undo change three dot dot or ellipsis two. And now NeoFetch is back. Very good. All right. So the snapper basically works. Uh, let's check how the uh, system rolls back. Let's test the system rollbacks using ButterFS Assistant. I really love this, this program. This makes it so handy and so simple to configure Snapper. Makes it foolproof. Even for slow pokes like me, I can figure this out. So let's uh, go to the uh, Browse Restore tab here under Snapper tab. And let's restore the system to our fresh install before we install NeoFetch. So we click Restore. Are we sure? Yes, we won't uh, name the save backup. So snapshot restoration is instant and complete. Please reboot immediately. So let's do it so before the system has any changes again. So let's just, or we forget, right? So we restart, you have to tell us, and uh, see what happens here. We select our grub boot entry. And log in. And we'll check to see if the system has been rolled back successfully. So, or, so uh, we can tell by seeing if NeoFetch is installed, right? We rolled back, so NeoFetch should be gone. So if I type here in the terminal NeoFetch and hit return, it says command not found. Lovely. So we've successfully, I claim, rolled back the system. Okay. So now, if we do sudo snapper ls, you can see we have snapshot number four, which is our boot snapshot, come in handy. Uh, in case the system crashes, we got uh, the last known good boot you can figure out from that and then roll back the system to that. Uh, but uh, we won't do that today. Keep this video as short as possible. Supposing you want NeoFetch back again, all we have to do is type sudo snapper undo change, and you guessed it, uh, three dot dot two. And that recreates our NeoFetch installation. So now if I type NeoFetch, NeoFetch is back again. So we've rolled back the system and restored the NeoFetch package install in rapid succession here. That's the power of Snapper. That's the power of ButterFS snapshots. It's, it's amazing. It's for, perfect for systems like this or Arch Linux. So let's install Flatpak. I generally uh, like to keep my apps that I use for creating videos such as this as portable as possible. That means I use Flatpaks wherever possible. I learned that uh, uh, with running Silverblue. Do everything you can in flat packs and the rest in uh, containers. Flatpak Remotes shows uh, that we don't have any uh, repos configured for flat packs, so let's fix that by typing, uh, as FlatHub suggests, flatpak remote add dash dash if not exists. FlatHub which is our desired remote. And the uh, URL for that remote is https colon slash slash dl dot flathub dot org slash repo slash flathub dot flatpack repo. And we check for typos here. Looks good. So we hit enter. It's going to ask for a password to for elevated privileges. So you can see um, it's requesting us to restart our desktop session to make sure XGG uh, configuration change has taken effect for flat packs. Here we go. So now if I open a terminal and I go and type flat pack remotes, you 
can see FlatHub is now available to us and it'll be installed, flat packs will be installed by default system wide. System under options, that's what it means. It could be user as well. You can install flat packs as a local user if you don't want system wide stuff. So let's see if we want to, as a demonstration, uh, let's, let's install LibreOffice, which is well maintained as a flat pack. Uh, yeah, it cuts off that list. Let's make the terminal uh, full screen. Let me try that again. Here we go. So under finished spell checker, <laughs> got LibreOffice. So we can type Flatpak install and then the application ID. Copy paste using the mouse middle click. And hit enter. And you go ahead and install LibreOffice. It's that simple. And the FlatHub packages are generally very fresh and kept fresh by the maintainers. So Flatpak list shows us uh, the LibreOffice Flatpak and all its dependencies. So let's test it. Let's go to the Whisker menu. Go to Office. As you can see, we've got all our LibreOffice suite apps installed. So here's Calc. There's the tip of the day. I click on help and then about LibreOffice. You can see we're running 7621. And everything, even though this whole thing is a virtual machine, look how fast everything is. It's, it's incredible, like instant response from the system. I really love these lean and mean Fedora installs. Keep the bloat away from my systems, thank you. So um, let's sudo dnf install for containers distrobox and podman as the backend for distrobox because podman or docker are not installed by default on a minimal everything iso install so you got to install this both to make um, podman to make uh, uh, distrobox work got the latest distrobox in fedora because of course Fedora is very container friendly. All right, so Distrobox is installed. So let's create um, for our development project using Distrobox, let's create a home directory for an um, Arch container. So with makedir p db homes and the home directory slash arch. So we want to set up an Arch Linux. Distrobox container for our development. And we can do that by typing distrobox create dash dash name arch. And for the image for that distrobox, that container, the Podman container, image arch Linux. Uh, default is latest the tag. And the home directory for this distrobox will be DB homes. That's putting a um, space in there. DB homes, yeah, the line break is a little unfortunate here. DB home slash arch, which we just created. So we'll pull the image now. So it pulls from docker.io and it's done. So all you have to do is type distrobox, enter arch, or we can close this here, this terminal, and we can go to system and look at that, we have Arch, a terminal entering Arch. So this is the first launch of our Arch Linux distro box. So it's setting itself up and it's done. So CD puts us to the DB Homes Arch directory, which is our home directory for this development container, where I'd like to install Visual Studio Code, the open source version. So just a reminder, uh, for DistroBox, the kernel comes from the host system. So this is a very thin virtual machine of sorts, a uh, very, very lightweight uh, container um, that runs near native speeds. As you can see, if I check the OS release file, we are running Arch Linux and it is of course rolling. Arch Linux is a great distro for developing Linux software. 
So, to that end, let's install with sudo pacman-s code, that's the open source Visual Studio Code version, and Python as a test. So we can do a little, little trivial Python development here, test the system. We won't have time to have a big uh, development session here. And I'm not a developer either, so please bear with me and be patient with me. I'm sure you guys, especially those of you who are developers, know how to do this much faster and more efficient. Anyway, um, so we've got Visual Studio open source version uh, installed. So let's do a distro box export and the app will be code. That's the Visual Studio Code app. That'll make it uh, available to launch from the host system. So if I go here to our whisker menu, go to development, look at that, code, OSS on Arch, code editing redefined. So let me close uh, the uh, Arch distro box terminal. Let's do a, on the host system now, this is the host system, F39-2, right? Distro box list, make the uh, terminal a little bit bigger. You can see the Arch containers running, it's only using 2.2 megabytes out of eight gigabytes of RAM. So it's super lean. Uh, uses very little overhead compared with the virtual machine. And look how fast code launches right from the menu. Let's mark it as done. Let's do a quick test here of code. So again, code is running in the container, right? So if I check the memory usage, Visual Studio Code is using now the container that wraps it, uh, is using 367 megabytes. Still very lean, very little overhead. Let's look at the extensions here. Let's install. So you can see this is running native speed or virtual native speed, much faster than a virtual machine. Cool, so the uh, Python uh, extension is installed. Let's make uh, code full screen. Let's get started with Python development, something trivial here. Let's create a Python file. You know, type in the editor window, uh, simple one-liner, print, parentheses, you can see tab completion, all that stuff is already functional, so fast. Let's do a hello, hello world. Okay, so that's, that's our, complicated program here. Let's select the Python interpreter as the next step. Should already be pre-selected because we installed Python just now. And there it is, Python 3.11.5. So that's selected. And then next step is run or debug. So um, if I push run Python file here. Oh yeah, that won't work because we have to save the file first. It still shows us untitled-1, but it doesn't exist yet. So let me go to file, save as, and um, it's not hello world, it's just hello.py. And in home, DB homes arch, let's put in, um, a new folder here, Python projects under Arch. Python projects and then uh, looking for the bottom right, the save button, and there it is, hello.py, save. Here we go. So now if we push run, as you can see in the uh, terminal on the bottom here, hello world is printed to the console. So our basic code, uh, Visual Studio Code development environment is fully configured. And uh, I would say we've done enough for today. So this concludes uh, the demonstration, a quick demonstration of a network install of Fedora 
39 XFCE desktop environment with a whole bunch of goodies. As you can see, this really wasn't painful at all, and you can get productive very quickly with the latest customized Fedora Linux desktop. Please leave your own customization suggestions in the comments section below. I hope this video was useful to you. If it has, please be sure to smash the like button, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, happy tech adventures! Thank you.